Has it ever happened to you that you took a proposal to your boss and she immediately had three trivial questions that you didn't think of and which took your proposal completely apart? Or have you ever planned a project only to find that when you finally moved from planning to doing, it immediately became evident that you forgot to plan with some very basic elements? It's like arriving to Alaska in the winter without packing warm clothes in your suitcase. Good decisions are seldom simple yes or no questions. They need to consider a whole host of different aspects. And it's hard to think of all of these when you're doing the thinking only in your head. I faced a question at work this week where I was unhappy with the depth of thinking by my team. I created a flowchart for the decision first to understand myself, what I was unhappy with and what depth I was looking for, and then to use that flowchart to explain my thinking to the team. This flowchart also created the opportunity for the team to provide feedback about the gaps in my own thinking, and together we were able to create a more robust set of questions and decision points. In today's video, using a simple hypothetical example, I want to walk you through the process of creating a decision flowchart. And then on the back of this, I want to show you a couple of powerful Excolidra Obsidian features that you can use to add depth to your flowchart. We will close the video with two additional insights into decision making and some ideas of how you can visualize those on your flowchart. So let's dive in. Meet John, a software engineer who's evaluating his employment options. He has a job offer in a new city and he's excited about this new opportunity, but he's also worried about leaving his comfortable life and friends behind. Follow John's decision-making process as he tries to determine whether moving to a new city seeking a new job in his current city or staying put in his current job is the right option for him. So John's question is really very simple. Should I move to a new city for a new job? Now John first considers the soft aspects of this question. How will this impact his relationships and what is the quality of life in this new city like? After considering the soft aspects, John needs to think about the hard financial aspects as well. So what is the cost of living in the new city, as well as what are the financial implications of making the move? Now, if the move is financially feasible and the quality of life looks good in the new city, then the decision is simple. John should make the move and take the new job in the new city. If, however, the quality of life in this other city is not good, maybe because of leaving friends behind, or maybe because it's just not a good city, or if the move is financially not feasible, John still has the option of seeking a job in his current city. And depending on his findings, if he doesn't find a job in his current city that would suit him, then probably the best choice for John at this time is to stay put in his job. If, however, John finds a good alternative job, then of course the right option for him is to make the move and take that job. So in very simple terms, this is a decision flowchart. And even though this decision flowchart is oversimplified, as I was drawing it and as I started to record this video, I recognized that there was a flaw in my thinking. Originally, the reason why deciding to stay put is right under the poor quality of life is because I had a straight line from poor quality of life in another city, so let's stay put in our current job. But then I recognize that actually if the quality of life is not good 
in this new city, John can still evaluate his employment options, his alternative employment options in his current city, and only if he doesn't find a right job in his current city should he stay put in his current job, else he should take the other job. So even in this very simple case, I was able to identify some flaws in my thinking and refine my decision, my hypothetical decision about this story. Often when we work with decisions, we use some data to base our decisions on. We might be using some Excel tables with data or we might be using some documents, decision materials. In this case, let's imagine that John wants to create a stakeholder map for himself to understand his relationship. So how would John add this to his drawing? Well, the approach I would choose is to click on this rectangle for the action to consider the impact on personal relationships and click here to create a link. And I would just simply add a title, my relationship, my relationship map like this. And after I created this link, I would click on the link and when prompted, I would just create an Excolidraw drawing. And here on this Excolidraw drawing, I would write myself in the middle and then I would start to add my various relationships around me and create some sort of a map. We are now not going to go into the details of this map, but you can imagine that you can create a relationship map using Excolidraw. You can also add some colors and some emojis, etc., to reflect the type of relationships. And this way, John can add this detail to his drawing without cluttering the drawing because now the details are behind this link. You can hover preview and see a preview of the content, but also you can just simply click on the item and see the details. And similarly, maybe even researching the cost of living in a new city, there are some elements of cost of living that you want to add. So I would do again the same thing, create link and I would say cost of living in city XYZ like this. And then I would click on this. And in this case, I would create a markdown file and maybe I would start to create a table of expense type and cost or something like this. And with this, I would just create myself a markdown table. And then coming back to my storyboard, again, with the hover preview, I would see the table right here, but the details would be behind this table. So I think this is a very simple and elegant way of adding supporting details to your decision flowchart such that they are linked to your drawing. And finally, I'd like to leave you with two insights into decision making. First, that the world is unpredictable. This means that any time when you're making decisions, you're working with incomplete information. And even if you do your best thinking, you create a professional flowchart, you add the details, you do the work, the end result might be different from what you desired. And this is not because your thinking was flawed, but this is because the world is unpredictable. However, people who consistently put in the effort to do their best thinking will eventually come out at the top. So I think it is worth putting in the effort but it's also important to understand that it's not fully within your control. So one way to reflect this unpredictability in your flowchart is to stop thinking in black and white, in yes or no situations, but think more in bets, in probabilities. And the visual approach that I want to propose to you is the following. So let's say, hear about the quality of life. Is it desirable or not? This is going to be probably not a black and white answer. So you could actually choose to use something like this scale 
And instead of saying this is fully yes, the quality of life is superb in this other city or no, it is awful, you can also just move the scale and you can say that, well, it is better, but it is not the absolute best. And then if you add these scales to all of your decision points, then you can start to think in probabilities and you can start to evaluate these probabilities. I think this is going to help you be much more aware of the unpredictability of our world. The second thing I want to add is when you make your decisions, you should also listen to your body, listen to your gut feel, listen to your emotions. Now, this first comes with a disclaimer that you should only listen to your gut feel in topics where you have experience. If you don't have experience in a certain field, then your gut feel will probably mislead you because the gut feel is really the result of years of experience. However, you should still record how you feel about the decision and to learn from your interceptive signals. So how would I represent this in Excolitraw? One way to do this, this is a very simple way to do this, is to add simple emojis. So for example, here when I think of staying put in my current job, I might actually think of yawning because this is something that is boring. I don't want to do this. I could represent this decision with this emoji. Now, if you add some text next to it, describing your feelings, that would be even better. But already adding an emoji adds an emotional layer to the decision. So let's say this one is a decision that you're stressed by. So let's put here an anxious face. And then maybe the last one is something that you're relieved with and happy with. And maybe this is... I'm not so familiar with emojis, so sometimes I like to search for the emoji for a given feeling. So for example, I can use Emojipedia to find uh, the emoji for feeling relieved, because that's how John might feel about seeking a new job opportunity in his current city. And so he would then add this emoji. And with this, now we have a decision flowchart. We represent the probabilistic nature of decisions as well as we represent our feelings on this drawing. And I think this is then something that you can put to your decision diary and revisit later on when you've made the decision. You can evaluate your thinking. Did you think of everything or not? Would you add something else in the future? Did your feelings lead you in the right direction or did they not? And did you assess probabilities correctly? I hope you found this simple example insightful and you now have a better understanding of how you can use visual tools to help your decision making. I recommend that you take the next 15 minutes right after the video right now Think of a current decision situation that you're in and just spend 10-15 minutes to put together this very simple process flow with some decision actions, with some decision points and some different outcomes and see how this can help you make a better decision. I hope you're going to have fun drawing your decision flowchart. And more importantly, I hope you make the best decision and that the decision will turn out the way you wanted it. Thank you.